Hey, Beach. Do y'all remember just four short months ago when the most intense and extreme thing happening in the world was the wildfires in Australia? You know, the ones where 12.35 million acres of land burned and 28 people died, thousands of people were displaced from their homes, and an estimated billion animals died, pushing many species further to the brink of extinction than they already were, many of which were endemic to Australia, meaning they exist there and nowhere else. Yeah, I remember that too. But I do feel like it's kind of gotten swept under the rug a little bit with everything else that's going on in the world. You know, like maybe a global pandemic. And it's not that I want to trade you having to think and absorb all of this intense and anxiety inducing stuff about the pandemic for intense and anxiety inducing stuff about wildfires, but when this was all happening in January, I actually filmed a video about it. And in true Marin fashion, I just never edited it all the way or posted it because... But I do actually think it is still incredibly relevant because Northern California, where I live, that also experiences really intense wildfire burden, just had our driest February on record since 1869, meaning we had no rainfall in February for the first year since 1869. March was also a relatively dry month, and that means for us that a relatively dry winter and early spring means that our summer and fall are going to turn into a much more intense fire season than if we had had more rain in those early months. I actually had the original idea to film this whole thing back in 2017 when we were having some crazy wildfires, so it's finally coming out! And in a nutshell, this video addresses a question that I was hearing very often during those Australian wildfires, which is what is the connection between this larger and more difficult to see, very large scale problem of something like climate change with this more immediate, very visible, very tangible problem of a wildfire? Let's roll the tape. You may have seen or heard some people linking these fires to the larger problem of climate change, but that jump from this immediate acute problem of the fires themselves to this larger, more long-term trend of increased carbon emissions and therefore increased instability of our world's climate may not seem that obvious or even logical. I mean, wildfires are natural, right? Yes, they absolutely are. And also, just so we're clear, we call them wildfires and Australia calls them bushfires, but they're just two different words for the same thing. Bushfire is a more culturally specific term for the areas in Australia where these fires tend to commonly occur, you know, the bush. So anyway, yes, fire is a natural part of ecosystems all across the globe. During hot, dry seasons anywhere in the world, fires occur naturally, often sparked by something like a lightning strike. Take Northern California, where I live, for example. In a balanced ecosystem, there is plenty of dry fuel, like dead branches and built up piles of pine needles for a fire to just rip through. There are even many species that have evolved to use fire as part of their life cycle. That's how common and natural wild wildfires are, and how healthy they can be for ecosystems. Like the lodgepole pine, for example, has seeds that are totally encased in resin, and they need fire to melt that resin off so those seeds can become baby trees. That's true for species of eucalyptus that are native to Australia, too, and they're both examples of something we call pyrophytic plants. Wildfires also clear away underbrush and accumulated forest clutter so that sunlight can reach the forest floor again. And burning away debris like this also releases the nutrients trapped in there, like nitrogen, back into the soil, making it better growing ground for new stuff. And fire even has an effect on the waterways of an ecosystem, funnily enough, because getting rid of some vegetation means that less water is getting sucked up into those plants and that water is going back into streams and creeks and stuff. However, with all of that said, that is in a balanced, healthy ecosystem under normal circumstances. And as hard as it may be to admit it, most of our ecosystems, especially forests, are not balanced. They've been logged, or we've changed and diverted the waterways to suit our own needs. They're plagued by invasive species that either outcompete native species or that disease native species. Our forests, especially, are 
all kinds of out of whack, man, for lots of reasons. So fires are more unpredictable and they may not have the positive health effects on forests that they used to, or the forest may not be healthy enough to recover and flourish in the ways that it's supposed to after fire. Forest services in the United States and all over the world do their best to mimic those natural fire cycles for the health of the forests. Like we used to just suppress fire. If one popped up, we would just try to put it out as fast as possible. But as we've learned that fire Fire has a really important role to play in these ecosystems, we've introduced controlled burns. And that's when we start a fire or let a fire burn naturally to do all of the things that I just talked about and to clear out as much of that flammable material as possible. Because if we just let it build up and build up by continually suppressing fires, there would eventually be a super severe one we couldn't control that would just burn the whole thing down. P.S. All of this smart fire management, like introducing controlled burns and stuff, indigenous people who belonged to this land before colonial invaders arrived were doing this for centuries before we figured it out. But all of this is still just fire management under the circumstances of a normal climate. Now, let's get one thing straight. There is definitely natural fluctuation from season to season and from year to year. Some summers are just hotter and drier than others. But the long-term data is irrefutable. The majority of scientists around the world have reached a consensus and there is overwhelming scientific evidence that global average temperatures have been steadily on the rise with minor deviations since we started keeping records over 100 years ago. These visualizations take that data and show the trend in average temperature for any region you might want to select. This one is for the world, and this one is for Australia. Oh man, oh buddy. Oh, okay. So how are these two things connected? This acute immediate problem of the fires with this larger, more long-term problem of climate change. I think this link can be really confusing because no, climate change did not like strike the match and light these fires. And yes, some of these fires would have happened naturally during fire season in Australia, no matter what. And they could have even been healthy for ecosystems like we've talked about. What's different is the severity. Fire professionals are all unified in saying that these fires are uncontrollable in a way they have never seen before. They are way too intense to respond to. They spread faster and farther than we would see under normal circumstances because of the conditions caused by climate change. Like all over the world, climate change is responsible for increased drought, less rain throughout the years, plus higher temperatures, especially in the summer, plus increased severity of hot season winds, like the Santa Ana winds like we've seen in California and similar ones in Australia, all of these conditions make these fires completely out of the norm. This is not what healthy, normal wildfire looks like. This is a wildfire that changes an ecosystem forever and not in a good way. This is true in Australia right now. It was true in 2015 in the US for the worst fires that we ever had on record. It's true all over the world. Plus, there are some areas of Australia that are on fire right now that wouldn't normally be. Like, there are areas of Australia that are meant to be temperate rainforests that would not naturally experience a fire season, and they're on fire. And here's the kicker. We've known this was coming for a long time. Back in 2008, a climate change report literally predicted this exact scenario for Australia specifically. And Australia's government did nothing took no action on the world stage to commit to lowering its carbon emissions or stop exporting carbon emitting products like coal, made no significant investments in fire response or forest management, which leaves me wondering, what are these reports for if not to instigate change so that we can keep these dire predictions from coming true? Like, what are we doing? Well, for an immediate response, definitely donate to all of these first response organizations to help them continue to fight fires that are still raging in Australia and probably will continue to for many weeks or months and to provide aid to the thousands of families who have lost their homes and in some cases, their loved ones. Definitely donate to animal hospitals and wildlife rehabilitation centers, yes, but also we need to take a step back 
and look at the bigger picture here. Maybe it's that we need to start talking about climate change differently, especially in these official reports. Like the primary reason that the Australian government has given for taking no direct action on that Garneau report was that it would harm the economy to do so. So maybe we need to start framing the changes that climate change will continue to bring us, like wildfires or sea level rise or droughts that will definitely affect agriculture. Maybe we need to talk about that in terms of how much they will cost our governments and how they will impact our economies. And eventually, hopefully, these fires in Australia will burn out and people will stop talking about this, but keep this in mind every time that you vote. Because many fire management practices and ecosystem management in general is legislated at the community level, in your city, your state, your county. So be voting in every single election that you can for people who will represent where you stand on this issue and who you can call up and push for changes in the community that will hopefully radiate up into larger changes, like Australia deciding that maybe coal shouldn't be one of their main exports anymore. That would be nice. That would be cool. And while I briefly touched on this before, we can certainly learn a ton by looking to history and to the people who this land truly belongs to. Because indigenous fire management practices by the Aboriginal people of Australia and the First Nations here in the US were practiced successfully for literally tens of thousands of years. Colonial institutions have ignored indigenous knowledge about ecosystem dynamics of all kinds ever since we invaded. And it has always been to the detriment of the environment that we all live in. And usually we come up with the solution and the indigenous people of this land are usually like, yeah, we were doing that before you got here. So we need to incorporate as much of that expertise as we can to come up with solutions that will work for this increasingly drastic crisis that we find ourselves in before the whole world goes up in flames. I know this can be really difficult and discouraging to talk about, but I really wanna hear from you guys down in the comments below. Like, do you wanna know more about how climate change is causing these conditions that make wildfires more severe? Or what about the link between the two feels confusing? Leave me a comment down below or over on my Instagram or Twitter, and definitely subscribe to this channel for new videos every week, usually. <laughs> I really appreciate talking to you guys about this stuff and I think if we continue to keep it in mind and make enough noise about it and take enough action about it collectively, if there are enough of us, we can make a change. <gasps> okay. Okay, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for being patient with me while I take ages for things to come out. But I'm glad this is happening and I hope you liked it. Happy belated Earth Day? Happy belated Arbor Day? Okay, I hope you're doing good. Stay safe, hang in there. Bye.